Morning, everybody. Thanks very much for coming along. It's, it's brilliant to see so many of you here. Um, my name's Amanda Peace. I'm Dean of Students here in the College at the moment. I've been a lecturer um, in the School of English for the last 20 years here. The title of this particular talk is, um, Is Trinity the Place for Me? What I'm going to do is to give you a very quick slideshow for five minutes to show you what we think are the important things about Trinity. Then I'm going to take you into the Trinity Explore website, which has some short videos on it from various students who are currently here at the moment talking about their experience of coming to Trinity. Because I think the most useful thing for new students actually is to hear from students rather than to hear from us. And then and we have Maeve here as well, who's in third year in PPPS. And at the end of showing you the Trinity Explore videos, we'll basically throw it open to questions for the last 10 minutes of the presentation, because again, we know what we think you want to know, but you know better than we do what you want to know. So I think it's better to have that sort of question and answer session at the end. So here we have it, Trinity College Dublin, founded by Queen Elizabeth I of England in 1592, and a university ever since, a city centre university at the centre of Dublin. Famous view of uh, Front Square with the bell tower there, spacious, ancient, historical buildings, not looking terribly densely populated there, but this is, this is who we are and this is our history. This is Front Square during Freshers' Week. This year we had three and a half thousand first years come in during Freshers' Week. And this is the week before teaching term starts when students join up um, to clubs and societies and really begin their social lives in college as well as their academic lives in college. And you will have seen the student clubs and societies stall as you came in there into the arts building. So, we are trying to provide an education that is for life and that is for every aspect of your life, not just for your academic education, but for your social education, for developing skills and talents, developing ones you already have, new ones that you might want to um, think about when you first come here. We are a city centre university. We are like, at one, at one level, we're a little village. We have 17,000 students in here. Two thirds are undergraduates, one third are postgraduates. So we're, we're enclosed in a space, if you like, but we're also at the heart of the city, and we think that that um, gives us the best of both worlds, really, and we're, we're very, very lucky from that point of view. We also have some new buildings, as well as the old historic ones. We have a brand new biosciences building just off campus, right down the far end of college. This is the Long Room Hub building, which is um, a research building, actually, for the arts and humanities. And next to it, you can just see there, the 1937 reading room, which is a postgraduate reading room. So we're a very diverse community. We look after our students from beginning to end. We have undergraduate students, we have postgraduate students. Um, we're a mixture of the old and the new, I guess, is what that one's about there. Again, we do have some iconic buildings. So this is um, the Long Room with the Book of Kells safely deposited beneath it, the oldest library in the college. We need lots of space for our books because we're a deposit library. We get every book that's published in English in the UK and in Ireland as a matter of course. So we have fantastic library holdings um, and the regular question to the guides in there is, has anybody in the college read all the books in the library? Um, and the answer is we don't think so. This is not Trinity College Dublin, but it does show sort of how iconographic the long room is. It's been used, um, I think without our permission initially anyway, for some kind of gaming thing. Okay, as part of our strategic plan, we assert that at the heart of all the college's activities is our commitment to the intellectual and personal development of our students. And I want to spend the next two minutes very briefly saying how we do that. You'll see that that strategic plan ends um, in January. We're in the process of writing another, but this uh, statement I think will stay at the heart of what we do around students and for students. Because without the students there is no college, obviously. This is what we have to offer you. We do offer small group teaching in um, every course. So you will have big lectures where you'll sit and listen a bit like you are at the moment. But it's supporting all of those lectures, then will be small group tutorials. So you will always have the opportunity to speak directly in dialogue to the people who are teaching you and to speak directly in dialogue to the students around you. And we, we think that's very important. We have unique uh, library resources, as I've just explained to you. We were also blessed in um, the librarian that we had who's just retired was at the forefront of um, electronic resourcing for libraries. So we have very, very good electronic resources too, and he drove that. Scholarship examinations. In your second year, if you want to, you can um, put yourself forward for scholar exams. It's a separate exam. If you're successful, 
and some 100 students a year are, you then get free accommodation in college and free food, college food, but it is free food, for the next four years. And because you're in second year, then that takes you into a master's or the beginning of a PhD if you want it. So those scholarship exams are there. We have something that's unique in Ireland, which is the tutorial system, which is adjacent um, to the academic program. Every single undergraduate student coming in here is assigned to an academic member of staff, and that academic member of staff's responsibility is to be there if that student needs help of any kind. So it might be something as simple as getting a form signed off or telling you what to do if you lose your library card, or it could be something as huge and life-changing as a death in the family, a broken heart, because it does happen, um, deciding that you want to change course and wanting to talk through the pros and the cons. That tutor is your go-to person, and that person has responsibility for you. Utterly confidential service, somebody that you can trust that will be there to mind your back for your four, five, six years in college if you need it. That person won't come looking for you, but they're always there if you need them. We have a full suite of support services. I'll tell you about that in a second. We have residential accommodation for around 2,000 students, for 1,000 students up in Trinity Hall and for around 700 here. And then we have arrangements with other um, blocks of accommodation in the city, which looks after about another 300 students. It's not enough, and we're aware that it's not enough, and we are in the process now of looking to build more. But there is some. And we have 100 student-led societies and 50 student-led sports clubs. And we think it's important that they're student-led because, again, that helps develop responsibility um, and also um, students really you know getting the kudos for what they do as well in the college is very important Trinity Hall this is so this is um, mostly first years live, live up in Trinity Hall that's in Dartry it's a Lewis ride away or a bike ride away or a bus ride away from the city centre it's about three miles away and that's warden assisted by the way so we have a, a warden who lives up there and assistant wardens just to keep an eye on things You'll know probably that there are various routes into college um, and there are other uh, talks about these during the course of the day, but if you want to ask any questions about these particular access routes um, after this talk, you're more than welcome to do that. There's lots of fun as well as lots of hard work. This appears to be a group of students sending um, a plastic <coughs> bottle around a train track at high speed, part of a final year science project. On the other hand, we have Trinity Health and Sports Week. This is somebody abseiling down the bell tower. You are not allowed to do that on a daily basis. I'm afraid you're only allowed to do it during Health and Sports Week. We actually got our Director of Health to do it, and we were all watching, because if he didn't make it to the ground, we were in real trouble for the rest of the year. Sports Centre, um, relatively new, built about five years ago. All students make a very small contribution when they register, and then you have free access to all the sports facilities during the course of the year here, including swimming pool, gym, ancillary, climbing wall, main hall. So important to keep fit and healthy physically as well as intellectually. But there really is something for everyone, and we do embrace the notion of um, fitness for all. During Freshers' Week, when you come in, we don't want you to feel lost, so we try to look after you as best we can. These are our Here to Help Helpers, who very reluctantly donned the green and purple, which they thought was a shocking colour scheme. I chose it on colour blind. Sorry about that, guys. They are there to show everybody around during the first two weeks of term. These guys lined up against the wall at the moment, <laughs> up against the wall, are um, actually our students' union representatives. And again, our students have a huge influence on the way that we run the college and they're there to represent our students and I think they do a really good job and I particularly wanted to get a picture of them in there for you today. There's time for relaxation, socialising as well outside the library. We like you to get into the library first and then come out and socialise maybe, you know, in that order. This is the suite of support services. You can see what they are. They are all free at point of use. So if you are a student in this college, all of those services are there for you, free at point of use, except for the day nursery. There is a fee for using the day nursery if you need to do that, if you have um, very small people that you need looked after. But it is subsidised, so it could be a lot cheaper than um, any other day nursery facility in the city centre. Student to student, we think the best people to look after students sometimes are students. So again, every student coming in in first year is assigned to a first year, a second year or third year in their own course, who again will be there as a go-to person and perform a mentoring um, function for you if, if you need that during first or second year. We see you through to graduation. We hope you'll come back to us after graduation and keep in touch. But the idea is that we're here for you all the way through the student journey, that we provide the intellectual stimulation that you need, that we provide the range of courses that gives you a really good choice and that we look after you whilst you're here. 
What I want to do now um, is to take you into the Trinity Explore website, and this is where I find myself probably technologically challenged because I do arts, and um, just show you a couple of, um, have some of our students speak for themselves. And I would urge you now to go and have a look at this website. I can't get onto full screen. I knew this was going to happen. <sighs> it's a Mac and I'm not used to using it. I don't know whether this is going to open it up or close that one. Is that it? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All my lectures go like this. It always ends up with audience participation. OK. Um, so if I click on, I know which one I wanted to show you. Sorry, I'm used to using a PC, and this is a Mac, and it's just ever so slightly different. OK, I'm just going to show you two, a couple of these now. This should go for us. Come on. <coughs> go live, please. Uh, it worked this morning. I'll try a different one. What am I doing wrong? Oh, I'm really sorry about this. Ah, finally. Uh, just being impatient. Is it going to load 25 times now? <laughs> I practiced this three times this morning. One more time. Hi, my name is Lara Connington. I'm in first year best in Trinity and I'm from Galway City. I suppose a lot of my friends would have stayed in Galway um, to do their college courses, um, but I, I, was, I was set on going to Trinity. My parents were, they're, they're great people, but they were very hesitant to let their firstborn up to Dublin to go to Trinity. But after a lot of persuasion on my part, when I firmly believed it was something I wanted to do, um, I took the leap and I came up to do best. I studied three sciences in school so everyone thought I was insane to do the course I'm doing at the moment but I love it after the first week I just said this is for me and I, I genuinely didn't think I'd be this happy this quick I suppose only after starting the, the second semester but I'm genuinely happy with the friends I've made and people I've come to meet through different societies especially in college as well and I love the player society that's the drama society in Trinity um, I was part of their co-op production which is probably one of the better things I've ever <laughs> ever done in life, um, socially and theatrically, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I'm also a rep for the Dubes committee this year, um, which is a lot of fun. We're organising different stuff like the best ball, which is the second largest ball in Trinity, and just kind of getting to know different people in different years in Trinity is really nice, not, not just first years, kind of across the board. Um, I'm really happy and lucky, I suppose, that we're in the arts block, that seems, that seems to be the place to be, the, the fashionable part of college. I applied to live in Trinity Halls and I applied for a double room. Um, I didn't know who I was going to be rooming with, but um, I met my roommate, her name is Aoife, um, she's from London, and uh, we're best friends now, that is no word of a lie, she's doing best as well. Uh, she's very posh, she's from London, but other than that we're basically the same person, we, we get on like a house on fire and it's so lovely to have her up here, she's, she's my backbone this year, she's getting me through a lot. Um, we take the Lewis in every day together, great bonding. Even though it's not the done thing, I would, from the bottom of my heart, really recommend people in Galway and in the West to consider Trinity, not to just write it off because it's not the done thing, to come up to the open day to talk to someone who went to Trinity because I'm so happy I made the decision to come. I don't regret it one bit. I think it was a great opportunity just to kind of break out of the city I went to secondary school in and just kind of see more and meet different people and just get on with life. Okay, I just want to show you a couple more of these, just to show you a bit of, uh, if, if I can get it to work. Yes. My name is uh, James Larkin. I'm from Mullingar in County Westmeath and I study Math and Psychology in second year. Before I came to Trinity, uh, a lot of my friends had already come here, so I came up to visit them, uh, visit them a lot, which helped me really see what Trinity was like. I, I went to see some lectures and I went to stay with them on campus, which was excellent and very interesting. I realised that it's, it's not exactly what I thought it was. It's 
perhaps a bit better because I've it seemed a bit daunting before I came because it was a big college full of people I don't know but soon you, you get to know people and then it's much easier. In first year I stayed on campus accommodation in Trinity Hall and from the get-go they just send you out to an event with uh, everyone in the, in the places. I think there's a thousand people and you're also living with five new people or four new people depending um, and they're all very interesting and it's very fun. You immediately have to talk to them in these events and there are also non uh, going out events they're staying in like uh, they have open mic nights which is excellent for I play a bit of music so that was brilliant for that and they play a lot of sport within the college which isn't too competitive so it's good as you just meet new people rather than just for the sport. I would definitely recommend uh, Trinity College to Westmead students because it's very close right in the middle of the city you get right there when you get the train up and um, you meet lots of people some people are also from Westmead and um, you get involved in a huge amount of things societies sports music um, and the courses are excellent. Close that down, otherwise we'll get all sorts of invitations from YouTube to watch other things that might distract you. <coughs> okay, so if you have questions, I'm very, very happy to take them. Questions of any kind about anything to do with um, concerns that you might have about and I'll do my very best to answer them honestly, obviously. Because I'll make you want to come up as well, because I think sort of probably for students, the best or potential students, the best thing is to get to get a student's answer to it rather than a, a member of staff's answer. Can I just ask, when do you need to apply for Trinity Hall? Uh, well, I actually stayed in Trinity Halls in the first year, so um, generally what happens, you get your CEO results and then you get your um, your get your place in Trinity and you should apply immediately after you get your, your place to Trinity Hall because it actually it's very competitive. So yeah, and it's um, the application is generally you fill out about yourself, why you want to come to Trinity, why you want to stay in halls. So So you can't actually apply until you've got your offer. So the minute you get your offer, you'll be invited to go online and look for accommodation if, if that's what you want to do. But as Maeve says, do it do it straight away. It is very pressured. There will be. I'll, I'll talk to you afterwards outside because that is that is quite specialised. But we do have um, we have um, a global relations section, and they deal very specifically with that. And the process for application and offers is quite different for applying through CAO. So I'll if you catch me afterwards, and I'll point you in the right direction for the people who know the detail of that. Is that okay? All right. by tutorials so if you're doing I don't know what course you want to do but for example I'm uh, sorry law. law you will find that that actually is quite um, you will find you do have large lectures for some of your lectures uh, so for example I'm doing politics I did politics in first year and I was in a lecture theater with 200 other people uh, which does seem quite large but then your tutorials are between 10 and 20 people and that's the time when you can actually engage with your tutor and this is also supplemented by tutorial hours that you can that you can have with your lecturer and your tutor. They set aside a couple of hours every week for any student in their courses to just come in and drop in. And also, it's fine to get in touch with them because they're more than accommodating when it comes to meeting them in person. So they're quite large in first year, but then as soon as you get to second year, you can actually specialise in what subjects you want to do. You find that they start to become a lot smaller. So in first year it was 200 people for me, then it was 100, and in second year and now in third year and it's about 50 people or so in some of my lectures. So it just sort of depends on the course you're doing. So for example, if you're an engineer, you might be in a lecture group of around 400 and the biggest lecture theatre we have actually holds 480 students. But this would be a typical English lecture theatre, which as you can see holds somewhere around 100. So it depends on the size of the course. Yeah. And as, as Maeve was saying, you tend to specialise more and more as you go through the years so that the lectures get smaller and smaller. But you will always have tutorials attached to the lecture courses. So even <coughs> if the lecture is huge, 
you will have the small group tutorials as well. So whether you're sitting with 500 people listening to one person talking or sitting with 100 people listening to one person talking is at one level neither here nor there because then you'll have the small group discussions anyway. It just means there's more people to get to know in your year group if you're in a course that has a huge intake. Does that, does that answer the question? Yeah, okay. <coughs> With your lectures, um, generally you have in first year. Uh, I don't know what your course you're doing again, but I can only say what I did. Uh, so for PPS or BES or for Hist Hall or anything like that, you have two hours of each module. I had six modules, so I had two hours of lectures for each module. So that was twelve hours, and then I had one hour of tutorials as well. So I added up to about eighty. So you get um, two hours with your lecture every week. You can contact them outside hours if you want. You can drop into their clinics, which is fine. And then you have an hour with your tutor where you actually discuss what you've done in lectures and where you engage with the subject. In first year, you'll always have at least six lecture hours and at least six tutorial hours. Okay, If you're an engineer or you're a medic or you're a nurse, you'll be nine to five because it's lab-based. So some courses you're doing independent work and other courses you're, you're in class the whole time. Conscious that people are leaving, um, if there are any other pressing questions, I'll be outside for the next 10, 15 minutes anyway, so, so you're very welcome um, to come up and, and talk to me about that. Thanks very much for coming along. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.